Good evening, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Saturday evening, 10.33 p.m. Mountain Time on September 30th, 2017. We're talking about Comet C-2017 K2 tonight. Pan stars. K2 for short. The rare Oort cloud visitor that it get, became illuminated just a few days ago. Let's talk about the ridiculous state of affairs that astrophysics is in today. And we'll start just by reading this article. K2 was discovered on May 21st. Slightly warmed by the remote sun, K2 has already begun to develop an 80,000 mile wide fuzzy cloud of dust called a coma. Slightly warmed by the remote sun? Are these people idiots? It's 70 Kelvin out there. <laughs> It's not warm. That's ridiculous. Dr. David Jewett of the University of California, LA, and his colleagues, blah, 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 to take a look at the icy visitor. How do they know there's any ice on this? They don't. It's just a cockamamie story that they're sticking with for 100 plus years. It's ice from the beginning of the formation of the universe. Oh my God. Where is any evidence of that? In fact, I'm going to shove evidence right in your neck that comets are rocks, terrestrial rocks from planets that have been in close proximity and through plasma discharge events have exploded, blown up, and been shot into space during catastrophic events in our past. And then they've returned to us periodically. And as they enter our electrical space, they react as a plasma discharge event creating a tale and stories that all the ancients write down on cave walls. So let's go on to see how ridiculous they are right now. K2 is so far from the sun and so cold, we know for sure. We know for sure. Wait till we see how sure they are that the activity, all the fuzzy stuff making it look like a comet, is not produced. As in other comets, by the evaporation of water ice. So all these other comets made of water ice, they've never found. And all the comets they have found and landed on are made of rock. And this one, they know for sure that the activity um, is not produced as in other comets by the evaporation of water ice. Dr. Jewett explained. He, sh he shouldn't explain. He should be fired. He should resign. Instead, we think the activity is due to the sublimation of supervolatiles as K2 makes his maiden entry into the solar system planetary zone. Made an entry. How do they know? Blah, blah, blah. So they're, all the assumptions are ridiculous. That's why it's special. Everything is special and everything is unique. And I'm so sick of it. If they just uh, adopted the electric universe model, everything would be the same and would be explained. Let's go on to the abstract. Let's get into more ridiculous zone. This is actually published in the Astrophysics Journal Letters. A comet active beyond the crystallization zone by this bunch of idiots. Just came out two days ago. We present observations showing inbound long period comet K2 to be active at a record Heliocentric distance. Nucleus temperatures are fucking freezing. Either for water ice to sublimate or for amorphous ice to recrystallize. Another source for observed activity. This requires another source for the observed activity. Requiring another source for the observed activity. Electricity in the form of X-flare, which came from our sun... I mean, we have data on Mars. Ben Davidson just posted the kill shot uh, analysis of the radiation storm on the surface of Mars. I wonder if there was a radiation storm on the surface of Jupiter and the surface of Saturn, and that just two days ago there was a radiation storm on the surface of K2. <laughs> okay, guys, enough fun with that. These guys are idiots. I mean, you can read this if you want, but they're looking for the source. I mean, come on. Electricity. We know what the source is. What I want to talk about is two awesome modeling uh, models out there. Um, these modeling programs are amazing. I'm going to just run through a few of them for you. And this is the trajectory right here that we're looking at for K2. I can squeeze it in here so we can go out of the solar system and look in. K2 is currently up here and is going to drop into our solar system, rush between Jupiter and Mars, and then come out laterally here. 
up between us, it appears to be they are placing it between Jupiter and Saturn on the exit, very close to Saturn, uh, Saturn's orbital uh, plane here on the exit. So this is a pretty cool um, model. And it lets you uh, look around, and it lets you run up and down day, week, a month. So we can quickly run this. And here she comes. You can run it back. And as you're tweaking around with the model, the timestamp is up here. So you can see she's going to be real close. Pan Stars K2 is going to be coming into our solar system early 2022. And if I can uh, keep the date there, yeah, you can just watch me run it up. And we can even get a close-up as it comes in here. You just enlarge it. It's so easy to use. Play around with this. This is called Astro Van Buten, and I'm going to link you to the K2 Comet uh, model here. It's really fun to use, but I'm going to show you an even better one. And it comes from this uh, website here. The Sky Live, if you don't know about it, uh, I'm going to leave links to all this. The Sky Live is awesome. It gives you all the data you need. C2 is right now, or K2 is right now, here's Draco. And so up here is the Ursa, I mean, the North Star. So you look north, and it's just down below the North Star here, a little to the left, north of Draco. So that's where it's at right now, currently. And... All these simulators have tons of great information, the declination, the apparent brightness. I'm going to leave links to apparent brightness too here. This shows you the distance, distance from Earth and angstroms as the time progresses. Interesting how it's spiraling in here and getting closer and further away. As well as the, our uh, objective position here. It's showing that it's only going to get to a magnitude of 10, which is pathetic. Um, a moon of Jupiter is a magnitude of 5. So this is barely going to be visible unless you have a telescope, according to the current models. But all of a sudden it lit up, so none of this is really holds true. Because as Comet Ison came in, all their bullshit models, that baby lit up too. So anything can happen moving forward, especially because we're going to this high cosmic flux, per flux period in the grand uh, solar minimum, this grand minimum we're going into. Let's get to this model. It's called... Uh, the 3D Solar System Simulator, you just come over here, come down here and click on it. This is a similar one to what we were just using, but it has the Milky Way in it. It's so badass, man. Look at this thing. So we'll come to the full screen simulator here, and boom. Oh, it is rad. You can look at the plane of the ecliptic here and see how the rotation of these babies are off a little bit, just by a few degrees. You can see how Mercury is off. Let's come into the inner solar system here. Check it out. Look at this thing. This is so badass. So just spend some time with this and blow your mind. If you haven't worked with a 3D simulator, this is a really cool one to work with. So I'm going to send you links to that. And there's our uh, pan stars right there. Here's your run through. So you can just move it by month or date, however you want to do it. So I'm going backwards. Let's go forward in time. Here it comes, 2018, 2019, it's descending on our solar system, Planet of the Ecliptic 2020, 2021, and then you can come up here and zoom it in for a close-up and roll it out so we can really see what's going to happen here. Move this forward, back, here she comes, August, September 22, November. Let's back this up, forward. Mm. So it's going to be real close here, probably the closest approach, somewhere in November. And then as it exits again out here in 2024. Watch Earth. This is probably... Pretty close. And then that's July.
I think that that will probably be it. That's pretty close. And that's April 2023. So interesting to use these models. Run them through. You can have this uh, comet racing by, go by the years. But these are badass models. Now let's go over, let's talk about the uh, evidence we have that comets are not ice. And there is no ice on comets. We had a lander land on 67P during the Rosetta mission, which is a comet. And it had these jets, which were not jets because there aren't any vents. So this is clearly electrical discharge happening here, electrical scouring. All the objects we see look like barbells because they're positive and negative. They have a positive end and a negative end, anode-cathode relationship. They have a center here. There's probably magnetic wave, wave lines, field lines right here. Man. And this does not look like ice. It really it looks like a rock, man. I'm a geologist. We'll get to that. There's way better rock pictures here. Here's some more rock on 67P. This looks like uh, Fohoi lava, which is a type of basaltic lava from Hawaii. This rock here is on 67P, this lava. And then here we see more what appears to be volcanic rock, like a microcrystalline homogeneous volcanic. I, I mean, this I could show you this all over where I live right here. This rock here, and then the scree slope on this comet made of rock with no ice. And here it's more scree and boulders. And look at this. This is like bedding right here. This is a piece of a planet blown into space with no ice because it's made of rock and dust. <laughs> Here's more pictures of that rock with the central electrically scoured central band. And the anode cathode relationship as it tumbles in space. Oh, I just closed the picture. This is the most convincing picture of rock. Look at this. This looks like uh, we just had a landslide in Yosemite. This looks like part of an exfoliation dome on a granite monolith right here. This is called <laughs> spher spheroidal weathering, which happens on volcanic rocks, which are terrestrial, and they're not uh, made of ice. Like 67P, this comet. And I guarantee when we get close-ups and pictures of the comet coming in, it's going to have a barbell shape. It's going to be made of rock, and it's going to be lighting up because of plasma. Guys, I hope you liked the video and the information I shared. There will be more updates as this rock comes towards us. And I'm going to have a video on the comet Ison effect to the space weather. I just had to go do some research on that. I uh, hope you got something out of the video. Thanks for watching. Be safe.